Seven and a major storm hits Seattle. That's at nine. Now, though, it's Shortland Street. I'm with Justine, my wife. But Callum, are you really prepared to say goodbye to this? What are you doing? Tell me you didn't feel anything. Brooke? Brooke? Brooke! Okay, I'm okay. We need help here. We need help. Ambulance on the way. Just sing inside, please. Stay with Just open your eyes. Stay away. Come on. You can do it. Justin, I'd be more comfortable with you inside the courtroom. When the ambulance gets here, she's losing blood fast. Yeah, I can see that. I can see. Brooke, stay with me. Come on, open your eyes. Come on, Brookie, open your eyes. How was it? Sure you should be here? I'm fine. Can't afford to take any more time off work. But if you could, you would. I'm okay. I'm just a bit jumpy. Mum, you were caught in an armed robbery. No one is expecting you to race back to work. Well, the counsellor said it was the right thing to do. She said it would stop me dwelling on the whole horrible incident. Well, I'm here if you need me. And if you feel like you need to go oh, Thank you, Maya. I just want my life back. I want to be able to look at the world the same way I did before Darren and Sandra turned up. Fair enough. It's rolling in from the south. Hiya. Hey. How was school? You all right? I'm OK. Finished. Really? Well, what else am I going to do stuck here all day, every day? You made your bed, mate. Yeah, I know. Maybe I should have chosen somewhere after all. Sorry. I know I deserve this. I've got to suck it up. Well, if you're desperate to get out of the house, why don't you go and see Ryan? You haven't been in for ages. Or you could just sit at home feeling sorry for yourself. Fine, I'll go, OK? Good man. I'm back. Where would you like me? On this desk. But I, I doubt that would be appropriate. Kind of asked for that one, didn't I? <laughs> BP 98 Pelt, Rapid 3D Pulse, 100 BPM, Oxygen Sats 93. What the hell happened? She's been shot. We need packed red blood cells. Someone get a portable x-ray. All available stuff. Now, now, now. Get in here. Okay, on my count. Ready? Got it? One, two, three. <sighs> Tracy, get that oxygen. Go! Okay, Bronnie's on to it. Could you stand down, please, Kelly? No, I will not stand down. Who the hell do you think you are? Get of this department and right now you're in my way. Move. Come on, Kelly. <sighs> Tracy, work on that bud, please. We need to move. If you could just fill this in and take a seat, our nurse will see you shortly. Hello. Oh. Hello. G'day, Yvonne. Mm. Didn't know if you'd be back at work already. First shift, you? No, I didn't take any time off. The ambo service are short as it is. That's no good. Well, it wasn't too fast, to be honest. You get kind of immune to these things doing the work I do. I suppose you would. I've been having trouble sleeping. Horrible nightmares. Sorry to hear that. Oh. I keep thinking, imagine if I picked up my grandson before I went to the building society. I was going to, you know, I was so close to doing exactly that. And if you had, you'd arrived a lot later and missed the whole thing, wouldn't you? And you'd be safe, so would your grandson. I know. But life is such a lottery, you never know what's around the corner. And these days, I fear for JJ and his generation. I really do. Oh, <laughs> anyway, here I am rabbiting on and you're here to see someone. Yeah, uh, put me out the PCC. I'm getting these babies out. Oh, right. And Yvonne, you weren't rabbiting on. It's good to talk about these things. And well, seeing we were in it together that day, you can um, have my ear any time. Just give me a call. Thank you, Ben. Oi, what are you doing in here on your day off? Well, Daniel came in to see Ryan and I thought I would check on him. What? <sighs> I'm being overprotective, aren't I? I'm like one of those helicopter parents, constantly hovering around their Sarah, children. Sarah, Daniel hasn't been in to see Ryan. Yes, he has. I just dropped by. Ryan's mum said she's been the only visitor all day. So where is he then? 
I don't know, but he's got about an hour to turn up at home again. That dude from the boot camp's coming over, remember? Oh, shoot. Yeah, so not a good look if he doesn't bother to turn up. I'd completely forgotten about that. Maybe that's why Daniel's been so down lately. Maybe he's freaking out. So? Oh, man. What? Is boot camp the right thing to do? Hey. Well, it just seems a bit full on, hey, you know? Hey, Sarah, don't go get any wobbles now. Yeah, but he's going through enough watching his friend lying Except in the bed. Except he's not watching his friend. He's not anywhere near him. Right, he lied to us again. Which only goes to show he needs to do this, Cam. I... I know you're right. I am. Shot. With a gun? Yeah, she was with Callum, apparently. And someone just randomly shot at her? Well, that's the most incredible part. So they were outside the courtroom waiting for the Scott Spear trial to start, and whoever did it thought that she was Justine. Justine who? Justine Jones. Why would they... Oh, don't be ridiculous, Gerald. Well, I'm just reporting what everyone else is saying. Everyone who? OK, well, apparently Aroha overheard Brooke telling Kieran that Justine has been alive all along. Now, obviously everyone thought that Aroha didn't know what she was talking about, but it turns out uh, that... Gerald, I took round a casserole. Pardon? The day of the funeral. Well, maybe she faked her own death, went into hiding. And put her family... Her husband and her children through all that grief? I don't think so. It's too far-fetched. Well, madder things have happened, Yvonne. Name one. Oh, poor Brock. What is happening to this world, Gerald? Just last week, what I went through, and now Brock. Where are all these guns coming from? It's like we're turning into the United States, where people just go around... Yvonne, it's OK. It's not OK. We're not safe anywhere. And it's only going to get worse. My poor grandson won't be safe in the streets by the time he's a teenager. Back up! Ah! Oh, Yvonne. It's, it's OK, Yvonne. Come on, you. I'm taking you for a coffee. <gasps> Excuse me? It's OK, Ben. I just got a fright, that's all. You're OK to cover her for a bit, aren't you, mate? I suppose. Ta. Let's go. Yeah. Pellet diaphoretic technia. Hypervolumic shock. Yes, yeah, symptoms of hemoneurothorax. Ronnie, grab the chest drain, Charlie. X-rays for you. Thank you. Oh, holy crap. Bullets pass through the right scapula and the right clavicle. And you thought the lung? I thought right, unfortunately, through the apex. OK, are you guys ready for this? Right. Logan, local anaesthetic, thanks. All right, then make an incision through the six and seven intercostal space and inserting the chest drain. Someone get the on-call surgeon, please. Make an incision now. Shoot, BP's dropping, 80 systolic. All right, four more units of blood, please. Go, 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 go. Is this a losing battle? I'm not giving up yet. What's happening? Dad, how is she? Not so good. Well, she... Is she going to be okay? I don't know anything at this stage, darling. I'm sorry. No, son, you were right. I should never have gotten involved with Brooke or anyone. Look what I've done to her. Look where I've put her. Dad, it's not your fault. Mum gave her evidence. That's good. She's with the cops. She will be for the rest of the day. She said it was okay to come and check on you. Yeah. Be strong, Dad. Okay. I'm okay now, aside from feeling foolish. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. I shrieked and cried like a fragile old lady. You got a fright. I don't want to feel like this. Always looking over my shoulder, always imagining what's worse. Then don't. You survived. You went through something scary and traumatic and you're here to tell the tale. We both are. I wish I was coping as well as you, but it's on top of everything else. Everything else? been a tough year. Is there anything you want to talk about? I need to put the past behind me. That's what I need. So do I. The past is another country. Sorry, you've lost me. Well, uh, this time last year I was living in Westport in domestic bliss. And? Well, when my partner and I split up, I decided I had to get away. Start again. Sounds fair enough. Still think about her a lot, though. She was the one that encouraged me to become a paramedic. If it wasn't for who I'd still be drifting around trying to figure out what the hell to do with my life. How long were you together? Five years. So, what happened? Why did you break up? 
Sorry, you must think I'm a nosy bag. Uh, of course not. Um, how's your coffee? I could go another. I could try calling him again. We've already done that four times. We're really very sorry, Sergeant Cole. Please, this is pretty typical of the young people I see. Except Daniel isn't usually so rude. He must have just forgotten or something. Or he's trying to assert control over the meeting. He'll be aware he's on the back foot by keeping us waiting. He'll shift the balance of power. Wow. OK. I don't think Daniel's that sophisticated in his thinking, to be honest. Yeah, subconscious, right? That's correct. It's pretty common behaviour, but we soon eradicate it. Eradicate? Like rats or possums? S semantics, Mrs Potts. Uh, please call me Sarah. I've heard a little bit about your camp. We have the highest success rate. Our participants don't tend to return. Because they're too scared. Because they don't need to. Daniel, did you forget about our meeting with Sergeant Cole? Yeah, sorry. Did you also forget that you're grounded? Did you mean to tell the truth about where you are 24-7? I was visiting Ryan, like I told Mike. That's bull, mate. Do you really think we're not going to catch you out when you lie? It's good to meet you, Daniel. Yeah. So is this for real, or is it just meant to intimidate me? I joined the army straight out of high school, and I take my military training very, very seriously. You're not going to be demanding 100 press-ups every five minutes and dragging them out of bed at five in the morning? <laughs> there is a fairly physical component, yes, but equally as important are the emotional well-being workshops. Emotional well-being? Yes, that's correct. What, we sit around and talk about our feelings? Something like that. Callum was beside himself, just standing there, covered in her blood. It's oh, crazy. Was it just a case of wrong place, wrong time? I don't know. I mean, who would want to shoot Brooke Freeman? What? Nothing. Shut up, Libby. I was at work all day, and there is. I know you were. Only me. Hi. You seem a bit chirpier. Do I? Hmm. I thought you might be feeling a bit shaky, especially with Brooke being brought in. I had a few ups and downs today, yes, but a friend helped me through it, and I think I'm going to be OK. Oh, a friend? What friend? Oh, you haven't met him yet. I was going to invite you all out for dinner, but you've started cooking. He can come here. We're just having casserole. There'll be tons. So, is this a new bar? <laughs> no. It's Ben Goodall, the paramedic who was at the building society with me. Where did you see him? He called into work today. And now he's coming for dinner. Isn't that a bit odd? You barely know each other. And we went through something fairly huge together. Well, I'm looking forward to meeting your new hero. <laughs> right, you have a list of items to bring, items that are prohibited. Yes, sir. Dan. Well, it looks like we are done here. Are there any more questions? No, we're all good. Actually, um, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the other participants, the boys who will be doing the camp with Daniel. Yes. Are they of similar ilk to him? Some of the participants have committed moderate to serious crimes. Serious? Like how, how serious? Violent crime? One or two of them, yes. That's right, hon. Daniel will be looked after. Yes, he will, but you must be clear, this is going to be a major challenge for Daniel. That is what you want, isn't it? It is. Good. I look forward to seeing you next week, Daniel. Can I get you a cup of tea, coffee, water? No, I'm OK, thanks. OK, well, if there's anything you want, just let me know. Thank you very much. Tanya. Poor thing, looks like she's seen a ghost. Darling, should you be here? I've got my protection. I'm not sure he's old enough to shave. How's Brooke? I don't know. Where are the kids? Send them to the calf. You look shattered. I should have sent her away. What was I thinking, letting her come to the courthouse? What were you thinking, letting her kiss you? Is it any wonder they must have for you? Justin, please, don't do this now. I am not here to pick a fight. Okay. I'm sorry that she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm also still trying to get my head around the fact that there was a gun meant for me. Well, you've testified you should be safe now. The case against Granger is pretty watertight, yeah. But there are still other witnesses to be called. My part's over, though. Good, good. You should have seen the look on his face when I stepped into the box. I mean, he knew that I was alive, but he was... What's happening? She's stable. Thank God. So what's the damage? Oh, the bullet went through the right scapular clavicle and passed through the apex of the right lung. Oh, hell. 
she's required several units of blood. Plus, we had to put in a chest drain for a uh, hemoneumothorax. About to transfer to theatre. Right. She's doing okay, considering. Good on you, mate. Yes. No. Yes, Daniel. No way. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? Well, Daniel has suddenly decided that boot camp is not for him. Oh, sorry, mate. That's not negotiable. But, but it's for criminals. What are you, Daniel? Huh? Fraud? Fencing, stolen gear, and the rest? There'd be parents out there worried about having their kids mixing with the likes of you. Well, TK, I don't think that's quite Oh, well, that's how it is, Sarah. But guys come out of these things worse than when they went in. They fall in with badass people. They meet real crims. And they're scared, so they do anything Sarah, to fit in. Sarah, no, he has to do this. Or he could attend another similar camp. Sarah? Sergeant Coles wasn't the only one on the list. Maybe I'll call him. I don't know about you, but I'm very keen to find out how she ended up in the path of a bullet. Well, I'm sure you'll find out, Miss X Copper. Robin Gardner was visiting the other day. I wonder if there's any. All right, if I visit. Yeah, go for it, boss. <sighs> okay. I think this long day is starting to mess with my head. Huh? I think I'm looking at Callum's dead wife. Well, she was out here with Callum before. No way. My <laughs> sneaky. What? She's been in witness protection, I bet you, but I have never come across a case where they actually faked a death. Hey? I'll explain everything over a coffee. Come on. I'm so sorry, Brooke, for everything I put you through. Right from the start, I lied to you, deceived you, and was unforgivable. And you didn't do anything wrong. I wish to God I could turn back the clock and treat you the way you deserve to be treated. Hi. Hi. Come in. These are my girls. That's Louis. Hi. Nice to meet you. And Tanya. Yeah, I recognise you. Um, I'm with the Ferndale Free Ambulance. We come into your ED every now and then. Oh, right. Sorry. That's okay, we go to Central mostly. And I divide my time between ED and surgical anyway. And you've met Maya? Yep, Maya the Brave. Although some would say Maya the Crazy the way you ran into that bank. And you must be JJ. Hey, mate. Cute kid. Where'd you get the kills though? His dad. He doesn't have a dad. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Maya is... JJ's an IVF baby, because I'm a lesbian. Oh, true. Mm. So is my sister. Really? Yeah, Emily Goodall. Do you know her? By what I? Because... Sorry. <laughs> As if every lesbian in New Zealand knows each other. <laughs> you must think I'm an idiot. Of course not. Now, make yourself comfortable. Um, would you like a drink? Beer? Wine? Uh, beer, ta. What are you making? Could you be any ruder? Could be any more tech? Oh, so she didn't know. Would you three stop whispering? It's rude. And then you go, pow, pow. <laughs> Are you completely ignorant? Hey? Look what he's doing. Look what he's teaching Jay. <laughs> you idiot. I mean, after everything's mum's been to her, did you not stop to think? Maya, it's an innocent mistake. Let it go, Mum. No, she's right. I wasn't thinking. Um... How about a castle, eh? Really sorry. It's okay. You know what JJ likes? When we make the castle taller than he is. Hey, lovely. <laughs> How could you be so rude? Thank you very much, Sergeant Cole, and I'm I'm really sorry for, you know. Thank you. You don't know how glad I am, no, honestly. hold on, Dan. Unbelievable. You can hold on too, mister. Sergeant Cole was very understanding of my concerns. So you're moving him to an easier camp because your son's too much of a blast to face TK. It. How is pandering him going to help? How is sending me to mix with a bunch of violent psychos going to help? OK, everyone, stop. No, Mum, you've made the right decision. Will you two please let me speak? Yes, I have made the right decision. I was concerned that the camp would be too tough for Daniel. And Sergeant Cole agreed that it could be. But then he promised to keep a special eye on him. Eh? You'll be okay. 
I'm still going. Yes. He assured me that he can see what kind of kid you are and that you'll be looked after. Hi. Hi. Sorry I didn't get back here earlier. You understand why I had to stay there. How is she? Stable. She's going to be okay. But I couldn't leave without at least knowing that. I know where you couldn't leave. I've um, asked Robin Gardner to book a flight for me back to Australia tomorrow. I can't just up and go without working out my notice. Callum, I said for me, not you. I'm going alone. Okay, well, once I sell the house, give him my notice and sort out the kids, then I'll follow you. I don't want you to. What? Things have changed. Just then we were thrown into a bloody difficult situation. Maybe I didn't handle it the best You're I could. in love with her. Whether you know it or not, you are in love with Brooke. <laughs> that poor girl is in a hospital bed because of me. I was desperately worried, but that doesn't oh, mean I was in love with on. her, Justine. you know it as well as I do. You may not have intended for it to happen, but it has. I'm not angry. It happened to me too once. And we survived that. We survived because the man I fell for didn't love me back. Who knows what might have happened if he had. I'm just being honest. But the difference between that situation and this one is that she does love you back. She's proved that. The kids have grown up and um, I want to move back to Australia. And you've got a really good job here. I think we're just heading along different paths. We have been for a long while, don't you think? Hmm. Be happy, Callum. You too. With guests from the world of film, music, sport and more, there's plenty of entertainment for your weekend. A Saturday night with Miriam returns this Saturday at 20 to 10 here on RTE1.